Welcome to the Midweek Market Update, where I do a technical analysis and give you some of my thoughts on SPY the Qs and IWM, the broad market most importantly. And then I've got five trade ideas for you towards the end of the video, so stay tuned for that. Kicking off our S&P analysis with our sectors as always. So we always look at who's winning, who's losing, and uh, where's our heaviest weight. Leading the pack today was the energy sector. We know they don't really make up a huge portion of the S&P itself. And the same goes for utilities down here to the downside, down about 1.17%. Not a whole lot uh, to write home about there. But what's most interesting really is where our heaviest weight is, right? So XLK being the heaviest tech sector there, up about 1.5%. And then XLF after them up just shy of 2% today. So I think there is significant risk at this point that the XLF does start to see some pullback, which could impact what happens in the S&P. So let's go ahead and just look at those charts for a moment, starting with the heaviest weight in XLK for tech. We know that we've already seen the pullback here, and we're just now starting to see a rebound out of that 50 SMA. You could argue that there's also some sort of trend line support in here as well. So tech, it really needs to pick up the slack if, and again, this is if, and I think something that is likely going to happen here, XLF starts to take a breather. We talked about this in last week's video. Uh, we have not seen any real meaningful pullback here in the financials. And there's a few things pointing to the fact that we could see, again, a little bit of a pullback. And if that happens, in order for the S&Ps to stay green, the XLK needs to pick up the slack there and have, you know, another impressive day. Otherwise, you know, if those two sectors are divergent, meaning they're not in sync, then I think we just see another flat day here in the S&P. P's. And after the range that we've seen, really, I, I would not be surprised to just see things kind of cool off, maybe a little bit of an inside bar here form into Thursday and Friday. Maybe we see a little bit of a cooling off sideways effect before, you know, the week wraps up. So a reason why I think the XLF and financials may pull back, and I don't really oftentimes get into the uh, nitty gritty behind the scenes here. But if we take a look at the 10 year note, right, this is this is something that we need to at least look at, right? Check out this massive gap down and we have a hammer candle that's formed, right? So when the interest rates are low, it causes more people to borrow. Therefore, the banks benefit from that. So as these rates have gone lower, the financials have gone up, right? It makes sense. But based on our technicals here, when we see a gap down with a hammer candle like this, after a pretty aggressive sell side move, it wouldn't be you know, surprising to at least see rates float a little bit higher here, which is again, why I think financials could be at risk for a little bit more of a pullback, right? Not only is the XLF chart starting to get overextended, as we just saw on the 10 year note, uh, that chart is starting to get a little overextended to the downside, actually. So those two things uh, have me at least watching XLF a little bit more closely for some sort of pullback here. Uh, now, all, all that being said, let's take a look at some of these targets here in the S&P and talk about the action that we actually saw, right? So on, on Tuesday, we've talked about this in the past. Whenever we see an aggressive move to the downside and it gets bought up immediately, that's characteristic of a liquidation break, meaning that short term sellers should be out of that market out of this market, right? And we saw that with a follow through day here on Wednesday. Now we're trading back up at the top of this range. And again, I wouldn't be surprised if we see a little bit of a resting bar an inside bar here after traveling in the S&Ps, you know, what is from 381 all the way back up to 392. So over a $10 range here in the S&Ps in a matter of two days, pretty intense stuff, right? If we check in on volume, obviously they bought the dip with some pretty uh, serious size, whether or not it was short covering uh, or serious buying. We'll check out the internals in just a moment to talk about it. Uh, but there's good volume here, right? So people are definitely wanting to participate at these prices. In terms of levels, we do have the, the uh, balance area highs here at the 392.38. If it breaks, I would be watching for all time highs, honestly, because this happened on a holiday session, uh, a shortened session, and we pretty much faded off of those highs all the time. I would be watching again for blue sky territories here. Uh, to the downside, if we pull back at this point, I probably would just be looking out for the balance area lows again, closer to that 387.50 mark. And that's because if we just look at this objectively for a moment with our Fibonacci's and go from low of the move to the high of the move of about where we're sitting right now, again, that's that 38.2. That's the healthy pullback area that you really want to see hold on any sort of, again, meaningful pullbacks there. So let's flip over to our internal screen now, and we'll talk about this. If you're not familiar with this screen, get familiar with it. I have a link 
up here in the top right. Check that video out. I explain everything that's going on here. For now, uh, what I really want to focus on is today's activity in the internals because we did not open on a serious gap this morning, meaning the internals were not skewed in any way because we know they read from the close. They weren't skewed at any point in the day as, as reading more bullish or more bearish than they should have. They had a fair open and, uh, you know, from there, the rest is history. I mean, look at this uh, volume read here, clearly cracking up just shy of that, uh, what was that, 500 million mark? So very good volume on the day, steady increase to the upside. Our breaths here were pretty solid all day, right? Staying around three to two and a half positive all day, which is just an absolutely phenomenal read. In terms of our advanced decliners, again, pulled back a little bit into that zero line with very fair open and then moved right away back to over 1,000. So in my estimation, all good here and very solid buying activity in terms of what our internals are telling us. And the same goes for the tick, right? This, I mean, all we have to do in this instance is look down here at the cumulative build. I mean, absolutely massive. By 12 o'clock, we always talk about the fact that if it's around or above that 2,000 mark, you definitely Definitely are going to have a trending day on your hands, and that's exactly what we saw today in the ES. So in the internals, and again, the activity in the internals that we saw all day today were indicative of stronger buying, not necessarily emotional buying. I mean, we always talk about that plus 800 to plus 1,000 tick being very emotional. It was controlled, right? It was controlled all day, very controlled buying. I want to expand this for just a moment to talk about some more um, nitpicky targets here in the ES, specifically around this 39.30 level, right? We, we pretty much came to this area and this is where we stopped on the day. So again, I wouldn't be surprised to see a little bit of pullback or sideways action into the rest of the week. If we do go higher, keep in mind that the prior all-time high or the all-time high essentially was set in a pre-market session, which generally does not tend to hold as the all-time high of a given move, right? We've talked about that in the past as well. Let's flip over to our market profile and briefly talk about what's going on here. I think, uh, again, I'm leaving this zoomed out so you can see there was the prior balance area. Now we're back inside of it and at the upper end. We sort of visualize that on the SPY daily chart. But for now, let's actually look at what the profile tells us uh, in terms of our structure, right? Our market structure. So we know that we have some sections of single prints on this chart, which is generally thought of as a gap when it comes to market profile. So think of the area here uh, between anything underneath our 3895 fills down to our 3891.75. And the same goes for here between 3884.50, we'll call it, fills down to 3881.50 as well, relatively quickly. Treat these two areas as if they were gaps if we start to see any sort of major rollover in tomorrow's session. But what I want to point out here and what is like, you know, probably the most bullish thing I can say about this chart is the fact that if we look at value here and if we look at value today, it was quite clearly breakaway to the upside. The next thing that we always look at is the point of control, the green line where the fairest price to do business is, and that's pretty much at the highs of the session. So that's a bullish signal as well. And then the last takeaway here on our market profile charts is, of course, the poor high that has formed up at the top. If you're not familiar with what that means, it simply is the fact that when we have letters stacking sideways up here, the auction did not end properly. That means there are people trapped up here still looking for some upside activity. So there's two ways you can play it. One, the market needs to repair the structure and those longs need to get paid so we see some upside continuation. The second way is, well, those longs are now stuck at poor trade location. And if we start to trade below some of you know key structure in here when the market opens on uh, Thursday, we'll call it, if we start to maybe trade below the point of control or below an overnight session reference, those people will have to liquidate their positions, therefore forcing prices lower. I would prefer to look at this situation here as a bullish one. Uh, so potentially looking for a little bit of repair of structure. Again, a repair in structure simply means that we have single prints sticking out of the top. Something like this is a great example here. You can see that is good structure. That's a good finish to the auction. And that's what we want to see happen uh, again, over on today's action, we want to see that auction complete itself with some excess at the highs. Okay, so all the takeaways here are, you know, I would say value establishing higher, point of control migrating higher all day with price is all bullish. And the point of control is kind of a 50, excuse me, the poor high rather is kind of a 50 50 coin toss as to whether or not those longs will, you know, hold and, and stay strong here after seeing a really aggressive green move, or if they'll liquidate underneath, again, a key overnight reference. But for now, it does all look fairly bullish here in the uh, market profile. Let's flip back over and quickly talk about our cues.
Cruz and IWM. And then we will talk about those five trade ideas that I have for you. So for the Qs, right? Obviously, we repaired this gap. I'll fix that for the weekly watch list video. We defended the 50 SMA and we're back inside of the trend channel now. We know that tech is a little bit softer, a little bit weaker, so we will have to battle back up through some of these key reference points. I'm going to get rid of the channel. Uh, I'm going to, let's see, I guess I'll just remove it for now. Um, but basically, I want to clean up the chart a little bit and just focus on what matters here. So I would say that a key level coming into the end of the week is going to be that 30 or let's call it 328.41 level. If we can trade above that, then we're going to be back inside of this balance. And I would expect some more chop inside of that area. If we roll over here at the back test of this gap, uh, and again, keep in mind, there's another gap here as well. Uh, but if we roll over here at the back test of this gap, I would watch for, again, some sideways action and potentially to hold that uh, 50 SMA here on the daily chart again into the end of the week. Flipping over to IWM to wrap up the broad market. Again, we filled the uh, we filled the gap, repaired the structure there. And what did we talk about in the weekly watch list video? Boom, if we come back down and retest that 215 structure, probably a buy. So great opportunity there on Tuesday to buy that dip. And for now, again, we're trading back within this area of consolidation. If we break out over the highs, looking for a move into blue sky territories. But for now, I would argue that we probably want to see sideways to maybe slightly up into the end of the week. Let's get into those trade ideas now. The first one is going to be on Lyft, L-Y-F-T, uh, the competitor of Uber. So they already announced earnings, so we do not have to worry about that. But what I like about this chart is the fact that we have a number of highs all stacking at the same area here, right into blue sky territory. So on any break of the 59 quarter mark, uh, you could argue that the true all time high there at 59.82 would be the real break. I would say if we can see a continuation or a close or some serious acceptance early on on Thursday or Friday over that level, I would be looking for a significant move into Blue Sky territories, especially now that earnings have passed. We don't have to worry about that uh, implied volatility on our options contracts. The next one is on ATVI for Activision Blizzard. And what I like about this play here is the fact that we had this massive gap in the chart. We have filled that gap on a pretty oversold move, right? And now we're starting to form a little bit of a hammer candle and an inside bar after that. I would say the key area that you would want to start getting involved in this play would be over the 9640 mark, uh, which is Tuesday's high and Monday's low, okay? And the next one, and again, remember that the gap has filled now. That was a, that was a, a good play here. This is looking for a gap fill reversal, okay? Next up after Activision Blizzard is five for five below, F-I-V-E, if I could spell. And what I like about this one, again, look at this uh, trend before I zoom in here. Okay, very strong daily uptrend. We came into the 50 SMA, and now we're forming a pressure cooker top here around the 196.50 mark. I would say if we can clear some of these wicks, then it's, again, off to the races into blue sky territories here on five below. The daily uptrend is so strong. We did not form, right? It would be a different story here if we had a high and then a lower high form, and now we were retesting. But no, the case is, is that we had a high, we had another high, equal highs, and now we're retesting that after forming a new higher low. Okay, so everything here points to a potential breakout over that 196.40. The next two plays are on Hog for Harley Davidson. What I like about this one is the fact that we're breaking out of this area of consolidation right here. This is like a day one breakout and we're moving into a gap in the chart. So there should be very little resistance in here. Your target is going to be just around uh, the lows of these wicks. I'd call it right around 39 quarter to be safe. Call it $39 if you want to kind of front run that a little bit. The key here will be opening above or potentially moving above that daily 50 SMA to see this up move continue. And then the next one is also a gap fill play on IBM uh, International Business Machine. And if we zoom in again, the trend here isn't as nice as what we saw on hog, but here's your gap. Oops, if we grab the right tool, here's your gap. And we're just barely starting to trade up against the uh, lower end of that. So if we can clear some of these daily power lines, and by power lines, I just mean the 50 SMA, this area of resistance here, if we can trade into that gap, I mean, that's a pretty significant move, right? From 124 up to about 130 for the full gap fill. Again, maybe you get a piece of it. Maybe it does a partial gap fill. Even if it goes 50%, that's a nice move here and a potential play in IW IBM, not IWM. So with that, I'm going to wrap the video up. I hope you learned something from today's uh, little analysis here of the broad market, and you can watch these five plays into the end of the week. With that, I hope to see you all at the weekly watch list video coming out this Sunday.